Dr. Pound here with Heal Better Fast. Today we're talking about the shoulder and what I do to help increase flexibility in shoulders that are restricted. Now, we've already tested Michelle. She has great flexibility, so we're not gonna be doing too much as far as uh, being too vigorous with our work in the shoulder, but whenever we're treating the shoulder, you don't wanna do too much because you don't wanna cause too much inflammation. So we are gonna do some muscle release techniques today and then some taping techniques that I use to help stabilize the shoulder, and we're gonna be demonstrating that today. So one of the first techniques I'll do is I use muscle or a Graston technique, which is muscle scraping. And essentially this helps separate the fascia from the muscle to allow the muscle to move more freely. And whenever I do it, I use uh, some sort of emollient so that the skin doesn't get too irritated. Uh, what I'm using today is a soft tissue therapy cream by China Gel. It's kind of that good mixture of uh, being able to allow the instrument to glide, but not feel too greasy. And that's important if we're taping the shoulder afterwards, which we'll be doing today. So we just put a little bit of that on there and we'll start by working the top, the most common injured rotator cuff muscle. That's the supraspinatus. And let's see if there's any scar tissue in there. Now what I'm looking for is I wanna see if there's like a gritty feeling. And Michelle can tell you that, yeah, there's a little bit of, it's like a sandpaper feeling, right? Something. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of gritty and that's kind of a scar tissue that we're feeling in there. And you'll also see as she tries to act tough when I do this, I as, know, like, this is <laughs> as they're starting to turn red a little bit here and that's good. So we're starting to bring blood to the surface of the skin. And this is probably her least tight muscle as we work the other rotator cuff muscles, we'll find probably more tension. The next muscle is the infraspinatus muscle. This is the muscle posterior to the shoulder blade. As we dig into this one, everyone and anyone who works on a computer or texts on a phone is gonna have some tension through here. Michelle, what do you feel as I scrape through here? I mean, it's not very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> kinda hurts, but it feels good. So she does have uh, some scar tissue buildup in there as well that we're finding. And then the mother of all tension as we get into the Terry's minor, this one no one likes. Right through there. She's doing pretty good. It's not too bad? It's not that bad. Okay, good. So her main problem, I would say, is the infraspinatus, is probably the most tender. And the reason that's important to know is because we have blood vessels and nerves that do run through that muscle. And so oftentimes, you'll find a little spot like right through here. She can move a little bit because she's trying to get away from the pain. But trigger points will develop in those areas where there should be blood flow. And when the muscle gets tight around that, you'll get less circulation. Sometimes you'll get numbness and tingling down the arm. And she saw she kind of moved her hand a little bit because maybe she's feeling something down the arm or maybe she's just tired of sitting here. So <laughs> we'll find out one or the other. Um, so as we work that, I do use a mixture of muscle scraping as well as using my fingers to release or an active release technique to release the muscles. That's, that's a demonstration of what we do to help improve range of motion in the shoulder. Now, once we have improved range of motion, it's inflamed a little bit now, we wanna help decrease that inflammation or help speed up the healing process. And so one of the things that I love doing for the shoulder to stabilize it before people go is we'll use a taping technique. I use rock tape because rock tape is not only one of the most affordable out of the expensive kinesio tapes that I use, but you can cut it to the size that you need so you're not wasting tape. It's also the least irritating of all the tapes that I've used. Typically people don't have much irritation if they're using the tape correctly uh, because there's no latex in it. It's just a cotton tape. There's nothing special in it. When I use the tape, I'll round the corners when I cut it, and that way it is less likely to catch on skin and more likely to stay on longer. This tape can stay on for up to seven days. It is waterproof, so people can shower with it on. And again, it just provides a little extra support through the shoulder. So if we're taping the supraspinatus muscle, I'm just gonna cut it long enough to go right over the shoulder joint and then come up over the muscle itself. I typically will tear it in the middle. That way I can put it on kind of like a Band-Aid and I'm not putting too much tension. The mistake most people make when they're using tape themselves and they haven't used it is putting too much tension on the tape. If you put too much tension on the tape, it'll actually pull and it can cause blistering on the skin. So you wanna make sure not to put too much pull in this tape. This tape already has about 20 to 30% pull built into it or tension built into the tape. So if you just lay the tape down on the skin, typically that's all the tension you'll need in order to provide plenty of support. But like a lot of things, sometimes people think, well, the more tension, the better, or the more whatever, the better, and that's not the case when we're using tape. 
Also, when you look for scissors to cut the tape, make sure you get a good pair of cutting scissors. If you use your standard, just paper cutting scissors, you'll find that it gets frustrating that the tape will flare, uh, uh, will, um, the little threads on it will come apart. You won't be able to get it to stick very, very easily. And so I recommend just a, a quality medical grade uh, scissor. Uh, so for the first one, we're coming up over the shoulder blade. The second one, since she's got some infraspinatus stuff going on back here, we're just going to put a little bit of support over that muscle and bring the taping up and over. So Michelle, I'm going to have you twist your body just so they can see the back of the tape. What we want to try and do is get rid of all the wrinkles so there's not any wrinkles in the tape. If you see wrinkles in the tape, again, that could cause some irritation or affect the, uh, the performance of the tape. But as she brings the shoulder back, so look straight forward, as she brings the shoulder blade back, you should see it wrinkle a little bit and that's good. That means we have a good tension through the tape. So the wrinkle is lifting up on the skin, not necessarily just in the tape. And that's what we want to see to make sure it's taped correctly. All right, you can go ahead and sit neutral again. Again, this is how we treat a shoulder that may not be, or that's too restricted and we're trying to increase flexibility in. I typically start off with some muscle scraping or a muscle release technique and then the taping. And that's how we achieve rapid recovery with any shoulder injuries. My name is Dr. Pound, helping you heal better fast.